We must now move to questions to the Minister for Agriculture and Rural Development. Again, we will start with topical questions, and I call Mr. David Hildage. Mr. Hildage. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. As the next uh, Rural Development Programme is due to start in January 14, would the Minister agree with me that to minimise delay, reduce delivery, or sorry, reduce delivery delay, and make for a smooth transition? It would be imperative to retain the current clusters and local action groups, or lags as they are known, to get money on the ground speedily. Well, obviously, it will be our intention to make sure that we are able to spend when we have our new allocation of funding. We do not have that um, final amount yet, but um, obviously when we do and um, we have our systems and programmes in place, we want to be able to get that spend out as quickly as possible. You will be aware that I am currently out to consultation on the new programme, and I think as part of that we do have to look at the current structures, how they have worked, if they have been effective in the past. And then obviously learn from um, any examples that, that we can take from that. So that's, that's the job of work over the next number of months, but certainly be my intention to make sure that we spend effectively, we spend quickly, and we have systems in place uh, and practice to be able to go as early as possible. Call Mr. Hildage for supplementary. Thank you, Deputy Speaker, and thank the, the Minister for her answer. Uh, and further to the Rural Development Programme uh, 1420, will DARB be placing more emphasis on the Leader Initiative? to ensure that uh, we take advantage of the higher uh, co-financing rate and thus reducing the finance required through our own national funds? Uh, as I said, we are out to consultation and everything is up there. I am very um, open-minded about taking uh, cognizance of all the feedback that we get as, as part of the consultation. I think they are very clear examples of, uh, and lessons to be learnt of the current programme and ways that we can improve things, but I am very much wedded to the leader approach. I think that is the, the best method, but as I say, I am very happy to, to listen to, to all the views as part of the consultation. I call Dr Alistair MacDonald for a topical. Thank you very much, uh, Mr uh, Deputy Speaker. The Minister will be well aware of the financial difficulties that arose in the, in the farming community in the result of bad weather last spring and the conditions in a further crisis that ran alongside it. Can she share with us any plans that she has to bring forward? Uh, various farm payments, like the single farm payment and other payments to farmers, in order to ease the financial circumstances. And can she confirm that all the hardship and fodder crisis payments have already been made? Yes, um, absolutely. I mean, the, 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 the year that, that we've had, um, particularly the start of the year with the snow, was particularly a bad time for the farming community. And then with the, the issue that we had with fodder and the fodder crisis, and having to establish the fodder task force, which, in my opinion, has worked very effectively. Um, it's dealt, at, at the time, we dealt with the initial problems that we had and were able to um, get hauliers and able to transport in um, fodder, which we were able to distribute then to the farming community. That task force has met now four times um, and have agreed that they will meet as and when uh, is required over the next number of months. They have very much been involved in planning for the winter ahead. So, um, whilst we have had a good summer, so we have had good growing season, um, we are in, in a positive position at this moment in time, but who knows what the winter will bring. So we are very um, open. We have been working with farmers uh, and preparing for the winter ahead, and I think that is a very key area of work given the winter that we have just come through. Dr McDonald, for supplementary, can I remind could, members could, please could, one could, question only? Could the, min Sorry. could the Minister confirm if all hardship payments have been made and if future payments or payments due shortly will be brought forward? Yes, um, the majority of hardship payments have uh, been paid. There are a very, very small number, I'm talking single um, figures, who for um, some technical reasons or bank reasons um, haven't been paid, but the majority, I'd say it's 99.9 per .9 cent, has, has been paid to date. And in terms of um, getting supports out to farmers, I was um, happy yesterday to be able to announce because of the exchange rate. Um, uh, uh, advantage that we, we were able to, to avail of this year, we have now been able to add an extra £16 million onto the um, single farm payments for this year. So that is something that is real money in the, in the, in the pocket of, of the farmers, so something that has very much been welcomed. And it is my aim to get the maximum number of payments out in December. Could remind members, please, not to be talking unnecessarily and allow the Minister to answer the questions. Can I call Mr Datty Mackay? The, the snow crisis, as the Minister mentioned, affected much of the north, uh, and in particular my own constituency uh, of North Antrim uh, at, at the start of the year. Now, at that time, the Department provided a lot of support, which was appreciated, and also some Irish and British uh, helicopter support as well. And now that some time has elapsed, uh, can the Minister confirm how much that support has cost us? Yes, as, as the member has rightly said, um, during the heavy snow, we needed, uh, very much needed, the, the assistance of 
both the British Ministry of Defence and the Irish Air Corps. And at my request, they did come in and provide that helicopter support, which allowed us to get that much needed um, fodder into, into hills and into very hard to reach areas. Um, and I'm pleased you know, that they were very both um, uh, quite happy to come forward with that support. Um, at this moment in time, I am pleased to confirm that the, the Irish government have said that they are not going to ask for any um, reimbursement for the, the cost of their helicopters. However, we do have in, in receipt in the department a bill in the region of um, £640,000 from the British MOD. Call Mr Mackay for supplementary. Chair Maggot, uh, Alaska and Coyer, and I think uh, that is a significant cost to the, the, the DARD budget. Can I, can I ask the Minister, uh, given that the British MOD do charge uh, in such circumstances, would she consider for future planning uh, only availing of resources uh, where costs are waived, uh, especially in humanitarian uh, circumstances such as this? Well, I mean, I think it's, I mean, it was an emergent situation. The use of the helicopters was an absolute must and something that um, was very positively welcomed by, by the farming community. And you know, it was a necessary uh, lifeline to, to be able to get feed to livestock. I think, obviously, the fact that um, helicopters run the helicopter costs money, but um, given the fact that we have um, a bill now uh, in the department for £640,000, is something that would make you think in future, if you did need support, where you would look for, for, for that help. So that's something that um, I'm actually I'm happy to confirm to the member that I'm actually challenging that with the British MOD. I have written to, uh, written to them and asked them to waive it, given the fact that it was uh, a difficult situation, it was an emergency situation. And in future, if we were found ourselves in that situation, and, and hopefully we won't, but if we um, happen to find ourselves in that situation again, obviously cost would be a factor in um, what services we would deploy. Well, Mr. Declan McAleer. Uh, good last, Ken Corlea. Um, given that the British government did not decide to seek additional EU funding for Pillar 2, what are the implications of the Rule of Evan programme here? Well, I mean, I've always said, I've said repeatedly from the start that I've been disappointed that the British government um, went to the negotiating table whenever it came to the overall EU budget with, with an, an, a negative view, with um, calling for a reduced, bu a reduced bu budget. That was something that was actually um, discussed in uh, Westminster, and um, parties in the opposite benches also agreed with that position. So um, to, to, to ask for that reduced budget, that, that, that being said, that being said um, we, are sort of, we don't have a final settlement yet in terms of the rural development budget, but we are um, of the view that it will be a reduced budget, and we're facing a reduction of somewhere around about... Uh, I think it's about 22 per cent. So that, that's, that's an issue. That's, that's going to be an issue for us in the time ahead. And I suppose in terms of the implications for that, we need to be very effective about how we design our new programme, how we spend the reduced budget. Obviously, um, there are a number of needs in the industry, and we have environmental needs. We've got rural communities who have needs. So um, we need to be very effective about how we spend the, the new budget. Uh, and as I said earlier, um, we're out to consultation at this moment in time, and I really um, I want to hear our views from as many people as possible who have had experience with the Rural Development Programme, who know the benefits of it, um, who know areas where things can be improved, and I'm happy to take a look at all of that in the round. Call Mr McAleer for a supplementary. Uh, 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 does the Minister, Minister envisage that under the new programme there will be rural community-based organisations which provide basic services that that will be included in the new programme? Yes, I mean, I think the, the approach to date has been very good. I think the bottom-up approach that um, communities coming forward with the ideas that they have um, and uh, asking for supports for, for ideas that they have, I think, is the best way to do business. It's the best way to effectively spend the rural development programme. I mean, I welcome, in terms of moving forward, um, some of the priorities that the EU have identified, particularly around tackling poverty. Um, that's something that um, I'm very keen to make sure that we're able to bring something um, forward around that area. Also around um, new areas of support, particularly around R&D, so research, development and innovation funding is all um, ver very um, helpful, particularly if we're um, looking towards a more competitive and balanced food chain. So there are a number of areas that we need to be working on. Um, as I said, the consultation is out at this moment in time, and I want to hear the views. I think that there are a number of excellent successes um, that, that we can point to, particularly in terms of strategic projects. There have been some excellent projects, I think, that I've visited, um, over, particularly over the summer, when I've had a chance to get, to get out and about. If we're serious about... Um, sustaining rural communities, about creating thriving rural communities, then the Rural Development Programme has to deliver for that rural community in its entirety. Call Ms Bronwyn McGann. Can I ask the Minister how successful was our recent trip to China? 
Yes, um, I, mean, I just returned on um, Saturday evening. I was there last week. I was there at the invitation of um, the Chinese People's Association for Friendship with Foreign Countries. and I, It was a very effective visit. I was guest speaker at the fourth Sino uh, Euro Agricultural Conference, and that was my primary reason for the visit. But also, um, when I was there, I took the opportunity to secure meetings with those in government that are charged with processing export certificates. Um, and particularly in relation to pork, that was um, obviously something that was very, very, very important that we were able to get that meeting. And also it afforded me the opportunity to uh, enhance the links that we've already created um, with China. So um, a very useful visit, I have to say. Ms McGatton for a supplementary. Gurra I thank the Minister for her response. Can I ask the Minister, does she think that these trips and the context that she makes whilst there are useful? Yes, yeah, absolutely I do. I mean, at the recent Balmoral show, um, one of the things that industry are calling for is that the executive actually get, get involved in these trips, that they're actually going out, that we're seeking business, that we're building relationships, that we're enhancing relationships that, that currently exist. And for me, this, this trip was, was another part of that. Um, we were very, I think one of the most successful things or, or uh, aspects to this trip was the fact that um, the Chinese government are now going to prioritise our export certificate. Um, for pork, and that's something that industry, the pork industry are, have been calling for. So for me, that's been um, a, a very much an effective uh, outcome to, to the trip. Also, as part of the keynote um, speech, which was um, over 100 delegates from right across Europe, so we were able to make relations um, across Europe, but also with the, the, the Chinese um, government themselves. And I was able to um, very clearly put out the message that we have high standards of traceability, that um, we have um, fantastic food safety, that we've got wholesomeness of, of our agri-food industry. So um, to me, that, that was all very beneficial. And as I said, that also helped us to build on the links that um, OFM, DFM um, commenced last year on the visit to China. So the Chinese um, are very much uh, into the, to, to building relationships. They're very much into um, enhancing relationships, and that's how they do business, and that's how we're going to get into that market. Mr. Jonathan Craig is not in his place. Call Mr. Joe Byrne. Yes, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Can I ask the Minister what are the ramifications for the agricultural community if 50% upfront? Uh, grants can't be got under the single farm payment in October. And what can be done to try and rectify this problem? Uh, the member is referring to, to part payments, and um, I've said previously in this House, and I've said it to, to the Yard Committee, um, my objective is to finalise and to pay as many single farm payments as we possibly can in December. Last year, um, we paid over 82% in December. This year, I want to uh, equal that, but obviously increase it. Um, I recognise the importance of trying to get as much uh, or as big a payment out to farmers as, as quickly as possible, and I want to be in a position to make advance payments in the future. Um, unfortunately, we're not at that position in time because of the difficulties that we've had with Europe around our mapping system, and that was where the priority uh, work has been over the last wee while. But we have made improvements which will allow us to get to the position as quickly as possible um, to make those advance payments, particularly around remote sensing, so increasing the number of inspections that are carried out by remote sensing. We went from 250 last year to 1140 this year, so that's quite, quite an improvement. Um, we're also encouraging more online applications, which allows us to process applications quickly. So I think a combination of all those um, efforts will, will get us to the position where, as quickly as possible, we are able to make advance payments. But I can assure the member that my priority for this year is to get the maximum number and the maximum amount of uh, money out into the farmer's pocket by December. Mr. Byrne for supplementary. Well, Chairman, or Mr. Speaker, can I ask the Minister, is she content that the officials are doing everything in their power to make sure that this mapping problem can be solved? Yeah, I'm content that I am putting enough pressure on them to make sure that I want to have this mapping um, system completely um, up to speed, up to scratch, acceptable to Europe. I'm content that, um, that I'm doing my role in terms of making sure that, that pressure is applied. I'm content that they're working very hard, that this is a massive, massive piece of work. Remapping 750,000 fields is, is a very large piece of work, and I think we have to accept that. We have made progress. There is uh, more of a way to go. Uh, the department continues to work with land and property services, obviously, and on field parcels, and we're working our way through that, and I think you will see even more improved maps this year. And when, we, when our maps are right, when we increase, continue to increase the number of um, inspections by remote control sensing, when we have more people coming forward with online applications, we'll be in a, in a position very quickly, I believe, to bring forward advanced payments. That ends the topical questions. We move on now.